everybody uh, welcome to my regular Thursday night session um, this week it's a little bit different I'm gonna do a quiz uh, rather than my usual presentations um, so all you need to join on with this quiz is pen pencil piece of paper um, I'm going to read out the questions and as I read them I'm also going to post them up uh, in the comment box so you will be able to sort of read back at them um, in, in order to be able to uh, you know if you didn't quite hear them the first time um, there's 45 questions in total and a maximum score of 54 points um, there are prizes which I'll go for in a moment um, but uh, just before I do that, as well as finding me on Facebook, you can also find me on um, Instagram, where I'll post regularly. Um, you'll find me on Twitter, um, at Daryl A1965 on Twitter, and I have a pretty comprehensive website. Um, which you can also get lots of information from as well and of course there's YouTube um, which we'll be coming back to at the end um, but uh, for now we're going to uh, make a start so I'll just quickly go through the prizes um, first prize is six months free access to the watch learn and drive um, website that's got a whole load of help with your theory and other aspects of driving but what it's got that's very valuable is 150 professional driving lesson videos um, on all subjects starting from you know learning the cockpit drill learning to move away starting stopping going all the way through all the various aspects of um, roadcraft and dealing with your maneuvers as well um, so alongside your normal driving lessons you'll probably find those videos could be potentially very helpful for you so there's about six months worth of free access available for you on that second prize is three months free access to the driver active website and the third prize is a 45 percent discount on the driving test cancellation finder service um, so uh, those are the prizes that we're giving away at the end um, as i said uh, I'm going to start the questions in a moment so for each question I'm going to post it up online um, as well as ask it and if there's any options to go along with the question I will also post those as well so if everybody's ready we'll get on with question one and question one is what are the four main fuel types available for cars currently sold in the UK now this question has got four points so there are four possible answers um, so if you can have a quick think about what the four main fuel types are for cars in the UK at the moment so that was a four point question so the majority of the questions will be just one point uh, but some will have a few more points than that question number two approximately 800,000 people pass their driving test each year in the UK in 2018 approximately how many new drivers and a new driver is defined as somebody where it's two years or less since passing their test lost their license now when you're a new driver in the first two years you will lose your license if you get six points so how many drivers do you think in 2018 approximately lost their license having only gained it within the previous two years and for a bonus point what do you think the most common reason is for people losing their license in that period So those two questions are a little bit longer than the rest I think so we should hopefully move through the rest of them a, a bit more quickly so question number three in relation to cars what does ABS stand for so 
So what is ABS? Question number four, and this one I'm going to give you four choices for. Question number four, what is it called when a layer of water builds up below your tyres and causes a loss of grip? And your four options are A, aquaplaning, B, aquaskidding, C, aqua flying, or D, aqua splashing. So this is when water builds up below the wheels of the car and causes it to lose grip. Aquaplaning, aqua skidding, aqua flying, or aqua splashing. Question number five. Of these countries, name the odd one out. France, Finland, Japan, or Canada? Okay. Now, questions six to ten are a picture round. So I'm going to turn the camera around for this. Um, unfortunately, there's no way of me showing the pictures on the screen, sharing the screen in Facebook. So I'm going to have to uh, do it using the camera. So if you just give me a moment, I'll just try and get things to a reasonable size. So if you give me, I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you some images and ask you some questions about them. So the first one, the red car is parked, which car would normally be expected to give way? Number two, if you see a crossroads here, there's a line of cars queuing and then other cars approaching the junction. Are any of these cars at fault? And then we've got three good old fashioned sign questions. So first of all, what does this sign mean? And the second one, this will be question number nine on your sheet. Oops. And finally, the last one. Okay. So I hope those are all all right. So I'll move on. Does anybody want me to show any of those pictures again? Okay, so question number 11. Which of the following European countries has no cruise control areas? So these are areas where you're not allowed to use cruise control. Okay, I'll come back to number nine. So question number 10 um, was which of the following countries, sorry, which Oh, sorry, there is a choice. Apologies. I'll give you the choice. Which of the following countries does not allow you to use cruise control in certain areas? Spain, France, Belgium, or Germany? And I'll just go back to image number nine. Okay. Right. For the next one, four questions, there's four possible answers, and it's the same four possible answers. So for the next four questions, 
the answer is either on the on the wheels in the cabin underneath or in the engine compartment so question number 12 in most modern cars whereabouts would you find the chassis chassis so as i say the answer is either on the wheels in the cabin underneath or in the engine compartment a b c or d so most modern cars whereabouts would you find the chassis question 13 and again in most modern cars whereabouts would you find the brake discs Question 14, whereabouts would you find the dipstick? And question 15, whereabouts would you find the visor, V-I-S-O-R? So say same four options on the wheels, in the cabin, underneath or in the engine compartment. Is the pace all right? Does anybody want me to go any slower or are we going are we going fine in terms of speed of the questions? Okay, right. Next one, next round is again another picture round. So I'm going to show you five pictures. Again, a point for each. So four pictures. And the question here is, what do the following warning lights mean if they come on whilst you're driving? So what does each of these four warning lights mean if they come on whilst you're driving? So image number one. So if that came on whilst the car was driving, what would it mean? Number two. The third one. So this will be on your sheet, 16, 17, this is question 18. And the last one, just that. So I'll just go through those again. So that should be question 16. 17, 18, and 19. Okay. Right. So question 20. Again, in relation to cars, what does ASC stand for? What does ASC stand for? ASC. Okay, so next round. So most good quizzes have a, a music round. So I've got a car sounds round. So I'm going to play you a little clip. There's going to be five sounds, and I want you to try and identify what each of those sounds is. Okay, 
Um, and this is going to be questions 21 through to 25. Now, apologies, because some of them are not very loud, so you'll have to listen closely. Um, I'd suggest that you mute your microphone or anything like that that might have caused some interference. Uh, and hopefully you will be able to get something from these. I'll stay quiet. Okay, so that was number 21. The next one. That's 22. And the next one. Okay, Oops. sorry, hang on, that's merged into one. So I'll just play 22, sorry, uh, 23 again. That's the end of 22. Right, this is the next sound you hear is 23. That's quite a short one, that. Now 24. And finally, 25. OK, so I'm just going to play those start to finish again. So they'll just come one after the other. I'll not interrupt them. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, so that's the last one in the car sounds round. I hope you could hear them, make some sense of them. Um, so next question is for four points, so a point for each. What are the four main causes of skids? I'll give you a small clue. They're all too much of something. So too much A, B, C, D, whatever they might be. So what are the four main causes of skids? Question 27. So the next four questions are true or false. So 27. True or false, you will fail your driving test if you cross your hands on the steering wheel. Twenty-eight, again true or false. If you roll gently and safely at a stop at a junction with a stop sign without ever coming to a full halt, you will get a minor fault. So true or false? If you're doing the quiz, I say, if you do it on a pen and paper, we're going to mark it afterwards if that's all right. Um, 
Question 29. Again, true or false? It is okay to turn left safely and legally following an instruction from your examiner to turn right. And question 30. True or false, you can ask the examiner if you can pull over to check your controls if you're not sure how to switch on the rear wash wipe. Question 31. And we've got at least one of the driving instructor on tonight who I challenge to get the answer to this right. What does SRS stand for in relation to cars? You can private message me if you want. So what does SRS stand for? Not an easy one that. Okay then, so another picture round. I think it's the last picture round. Yep, last picture round. So this one is going to be name the car logos. So which cars have got these six logos? So logo number one, we can all dream. Logo number two, usually seen in the rear view mirror, very close. Logo number three. Logo number four. Number five and number six. So just quickly show you those again. First logo, second, third, fourth, fifth and six Oops. oh camera what are you doing right okay then so home straight now get through the last few questions quickly hopefully so you should hopefully if you've been keeping things neat and tidy be on question 38 now and we've got some tv film and show film and tv show questions so which film or tv show featured the following cars first of all the footmobile so which tv show or film had the footmobile in it Question 39, the mystery machine. Question 40, a yellow reliant regal van. Nice easy one now, 41, the Batmobile. And question 42, 
Question 42. A mostly yellow Fiat Cinquecento. Okay, so last three questions. Next one is worth three points. So you've got the main question and two possible bonus points. So 43, how many times has Lewis Hamilton won the FAA Formula One World Championship? And for a possible two bonus points, which two teams has he driven for during his Formula One career? Question 44. So we've got two connecting word questions. So I'm going to give you three words and I want you to, the answer is which word connects these three words and it will basically be you can either put this the, the word in front of or after each of these three words and it will make sense. So your first one is box, top and change. So which other words could you put before or after each of those and make another phrase or word? Box, top and change. And the final question again, what connects engine, gearbox and change? So that's the last question. Um, all the questions are in the um, comments there. So if there's anybody joined late who wants to quickly run through them and come up with an entry, then I'll give you a couple of minutes. Um, before I do that, does anybody want any questions repeating? Or any images re-showing? At this point in a pub quiz, we'd normally go and get a beer, but uh, that's probably not going to work tonight. In terms of marking it, I'm going to let you mark your own. I'm going to trust honesty and then at the end you can post your scores up there and we'll see who's going to walk away with a prize. So does anybody want any more time or is everybody ready for me to go through the questions and the answers? Okay then, so I'm going to go through the questions and the answers then. So question one, um, so a point for each here. What are the four main fuel types available for cars in the UK? The answers are petrol, diesel, electric, an LPG or liquid petroleum gas or you can call it auto gas any of those are fine if you've put unleaded instead of petrol that's fine as well so petrol diesel electric and LPG four points if you got them all a point for each in 2018 approximately 12,000 new drivers lost their license so those are people who passed in 2016 or 17 or part of 2018. Um, 12,000 lost a license and the most common reason at that time was no or incorrect insurance. I wouldn't be surprised if that changes in the near future and we start to see the use of mobile phones starting to go up there because using your mobile phone without uh, a um, if you're caught, a track six points straight away. And as I said earlier, within your first two years, if you get six points in your license, you will lose it and you will have to do both parts of your driving test again. 
but in 2018 it was 12,000 and no or incorrect insurance. ABS, question number three, stands for anti-lock braking system. Question number four, when a layer of water builds below your tyres and causes a loss of grip, this is called aquaplaning. Option A, aquaplaning. Um, now this is extremely dangerous, also fortunately relatively rare. You are more likely to be in a skid than an aquaplane situation because the, the weather conditions that require it tend to be more often uh, causing a skid than they do cause aquaplaning. But aquaplaning is something that you really don't want to experience. If you do, what will happen is, well, first of all, you'll probably be driving relatively quickly and you'll be driving in wet conditions where there's a lot of standing water. The clues that you are aquaplaning is that suddenly things will go quite quiet, noticeably quieter because the, the wheels will no longer be in contact with the concrete um, and the steering will go very light. What you must do is almost precisely nothing. Ease off the gas. Do not steer. Do not brake. If you ease off the gas, the car should slow and because it slows, it should start to drop down because the, it's like skimming a stone, basically. And hopefully you'll re-engage back with the wheel, back with the road and be able to regain control. If you brake or steer when you're in this situation, you'll almost certainly leave the road at high speed and have a, an awful crash. Um, number five, the odd one out of France, Finland, Japan and Canada is Japan. Japan drive on the left like we do. All the other countries drive on the right. So the first picture round, I'll just bring the pictures up again. So the first question was in this situation here where the red car is parked, you would normally expect the yellow car to give way because the obstruction is on their side and they're clearly not going to get past that red car without getting in the way of the blue car. The next one, the car's queuing at the junction. You would really say that the green, the light, this light green car here and this light blue car here are at fault. They've not left the junction clear. So this red car can't complete the turn and there really is no reason they shouldn't be able to other than these two cars being in the way. And this yellow car, if he wanted to go straight across the junction, the green car would be in his way. As it is, he's wanted to turn left. So that does mitigate the situation a little bit. But ideally, this green car would be just a little bit further back than the blue car the light blue car and obviously everybody else would be behind him and then this junction would still be clear for use by other cars that don't have to worry about this queue. The road signs, next one, first one means slippery conditions ahead so take care, be careful. This one means dual carriageway ends so you've got two roads, two, two carriageways becoming one. And this means, means that there's a dead end or a no through road on your left. Okay, so that was question 10, the last picture round. Question number 11. Which country has areas where you're not allowed to use cruise control? And the answer is Belgium. Um, so if you're using cruise control in those areas, it, you can potentially get um, a, a, a fine from the Belgian authorities. In most modern cars, you, the chassis would be underneath the car because it's basically the, the running gear for the car and it's what really differentiates uh, decent cars from bad cars. Um, you tend to find cars like BMWs, etc. have got seen as best, the best driving chassis. Um, and then the cheaper end of the car, you tend to find that they're less solid um, and maybe don't give quite, quite such a good ride. Brake discs, hopefully you all got this one. You'd find them on the wheels. The dipstick you would find in the engine compartment. You use that to check the oil level. And that's one of your show me, tell me questions. How would you check the oil level uh, was sufficient? You'd withdraw the drop dipstick, um, wipe it clean and then check it was between the minimum and the maximum. And whereabouts is the visor, V-I-S-O-R, that's in the engine, in, in the, not in the engine, in the cabin. 
uh, it's basically the sun visor that you can pull down to stop yourself being dazzled. Back to the next picture round and the warning lights. So the first one means you've either got a problem with your battery or the charging system on the car, but either way the car's electrics are, uh, are at fault and need looking at. The next one, now that one will either be on because you've left your handbrake on. Um, so when you move off and the handbrake's still on, that light will stay on. And that's the most common reason amongst learners that that light comes on. So if you see that light on the dashboard, you want to check that your handbrake is off. If your handbrake is off, then what that means is you have a problem with the braking system and you really do need to be stopping and getting that sorted sooner rather than later. You don't want to be driving with dodgy brakes. That one hopefully, again, straight, straight, quite straightforward. It means there's a problem with the anti-lock braking system. Now it doesn't mean you have no brakes, it just means that in the event of hard braking the wheels may lock up. Again, it does need sorting. And again, this is one of your show me, tell me questions. The question being, how would you know there's a problem with your anti-lock braking system? The answer being, the ABS light would come on. And this one, you will find on a lot of modern cars, it basically means that one of the tyres, or one or more of the tyre pressures, one of the more of the tyres has lost pressure. Um, the, the car has little monitors in each of the tyres and should alert you if the pressures drop. So that was question 19. ASC in cars stands for Automatic Stability Control, um, also known as Traction Control, but the uh, acronym in a lot of cars is ASC. The car sounds, I hope you could hear them. The first one was indicators. So when you put your indicators on, you do get a sound. Um, the things I just want to emphasize here are that Obviously, if you're indicating, you should hear the sound. And if you want your indicators on, you expect to hear the sound. But also, if you set up for, for example, for a roundabout, maybe you have to change lanes. You've got your right signal on. As you change lanes and straighten up, the indicator will knock off and you'll not hear that sound anymore. So the absence of the sound should also be an alert to you where needed that you need to put your indicator back on. The next one pet hate of mine that was the sound of windscreen wipers on a dry windscreen and um, this is something that quite often happens where people have maybe put the wipers on it stops raining and they continue to leave leave them on because they're concentrating on other things so that sound is not one you want to particularly hear let's switch them wipers off when it's no longer raining the third one number 23 quite short that was putting the handbrake on without using the button Again, this is a sound you shouldn't really hear because as you put your handbrake on, you should really push the button in and then lift it and let go of the button. Um, but if you don't put the button in, you'll hear that ratchet sound. 24, something you should all do as soon as you get in the car. Putting on and fastening your seatbelt. And 25 was lowering an electric window. Question 26, what are the four main causes of skids? Now, I'm not sure what answers people have got, but some may have rain, snow, that sort of thing. I'm afraid those answers are not correct. The answers are all to do with what the driver's doing. So the four main causes of skids are too much braking, or too much acceleration, or too much steering, or too much speed. Any one of those or any combination of those can result in a skid. Granted, if you're on a, a slippy or loose surface, the skid's more likely, but it's still your fault because you should have taken into account the conditions and done things more steadily or gradually at a slower speed in order to reduce the chance of that happening. To help you remember that, you can just think of the acronym B BAS, B -A -S -S, BAS or BASE. Um, and to just remember that all, the, all skids are caused by the driver. The true or false round. So you will fail your driving test if you cross your hands on the steering wheel. This is false. You will not fail your driving test just for crossing your hands. Um, what the examiner is looking for is for you to have safe 
and effective control of the steering wheel. If your style involves crossing the hands and that is still safe and effective, then that is not a driving fault. But if you're crossing your hands like this and you're not able to just turn the wheel as much as you need, that's a different matter. But that's because you haven't got safe and effective control, not because you cross them. A junction with a stop sign. So if you roll up to it gently and safely uh, without ever coming to a halt, you'll get a minor fault. That is false. You will get a serious. You will fail your driving test at that point. A stop sign is a mandatory um, instruction. When you come up to a junction with a stop sign, that's the red octagon, and it's almost always accompanied by the word stop painted on the road, you must stop at the line and then make your observations and move away. Even if it's a, a junction where you can see it's clear on approach, and sometimes they are, I can't always explain why it's a stop sign, but that's the way it's been made out. And it's safely, it will still be a fail because you didn't obey the, um, the, the instruction. So true or false, it is safe, so it's okay to turn safe, sorry, I'll start again. It is okay to turn left safely and legally following an instruction from your examiner to turn right. That is true. Obviously, your examiner would prefer you to go the way they've asked, but if you don't, that in itself is not a fault, as long as whatever you do do, you do safely and legally. So if you've indicated to turn left and it's safe to turn left, then you're not going to get a fault for that. And true or false, you can ask your examiner if you can pull over to check your controls if you're not sure how to switch on the rear wash wipe. Yes, that is true. If there's anything that you're not happy with, it's absolutely fine for you to ask. You can pull over just to check things. So, for example, if you're feeling particularly nervous um, and it's a um, or you need to remind yourself how to just whether it's safe, legal and convenient, you don't uh, get in the way of other road users, then that won't be a problem. Sometimes your examiner may even suggest that you pull over if they can see that you're suffering from nerves. So the final pitch around, the car logos. Quickly go through these. So number one. Bentley, if you're lucky. Number two is Audi. Third one is Vauxhall. Fourth one is Skoda. Mercedes. And being seen more and more commonly now, Tesla, the electric car. Brand. Question 38. So these are the film and TV show questions. Which, fe which, which TV or film um, featured the following cars? The Footmobile. That was the Flintstones. The Mystery Machine was Scooby-Doo. A yellow Regal, a yellow Reliant Regal van was Only Fools and Horses. The Batmobile was Batman. If you didn't get that one, then I'm afraid you should lose all your points. And a mostly yellow Fiat Cinquecento was the in-betweeners. Question 43. Lewis Hamilton has won the Formula One World Championship six times. That's one point. And if you got the two teams that he drove for, there's a point for each of those as well. So he's driven for McLaren, first of all, and he currently drives for Mercedes. And he's rumoured to be seeing out his career for the next year with Ferrari. The last two questions, these are the connecting word questions. So the word that connects box, top and change is gear. Gearbox, top gear and change gear. And the word that connects engine, gearbox and change is oil, engine oil, gearbox oil and oil change. So that is the last question. So if you want to tot up your answers, the maximum is 54. So when you've added them up, if you want to uh, 
just post a comment in the comment box with your score and we'll see who's won Sorry, forgot to turn the camera around. Just give me a like if you're still there. Hey, hey. I have a strong feeling that Charlotte is the only person who is loyal enough to stay for me throughout. So well done, Charlotte. I shall award you all three prizes unless somebody else gives me a score in a moment. <laughs> Convincingly. Okay, so well done. So I hope you found that um, useful. I tried to make it uh, not just about um, driving theory, but hopefully you have learned a few things in there, some of which will be useful for you for your theory um, and or for the actual driving test. So I will send you details, Charlotte, for the six months access to Watch, Learn and Drive. And you can have your three months access to Drive Active and your 45% discount on your driving test cancellation finder, which hopefully we'll be able to use in the coming months when we can actually get back to uh, to driving again. Um, so thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, for those that didn't win um, or didn't get a chance to take part fully, if you do want to get some exclusive discount codes for the cancellation finder and for learner driver insurance, then if you head over to my YouTube channel, and subscribe and then send me a message to send to uh, to say that you've subscribed with um, I will reply to you with the relevant codes um, my YouTube channel address is just been posted up in the comments so subscribe there um, send me a message and I'll send you the relevant codes Okay, so I haven't decided what I'm going to do next week, um, but uh, I'll let everybody know when I do. I'll post this up. Um, you, people can probably do the quiz if they really wanted to. Um, and uh, see you all next week. Um, we've finished, finished in time to go out and thank the NHS. Um, and uh, say hopefully I'll be seeing some of you uh, come July if the uh, current lockdown rules stay as they're currently suggested. Good night.